I realise it's a little bit dark in here, but there's not really much I can do about it at the moment. Flagship hardware is something that so many people look for when buying a new smartphone. And up until recently, that's been a fairly reasonable approach since going with a mid-range chip meant not only throwing away raw performance in just CPU and graphics, but also a bunch of features like Ultra HD video recording, big pixel bin sensors, and even 5G. However, Qualcomm has pretty much just changed the game with the release of its 765 series chipsets which not only are more powerful than anything that came before it in the 700 series, but also that pack the most features. This chip could mean that you wouldn't have to go out and buy a flagship if you wanted more than say a couple of years in the device's lifespan. And this is awesome given the ridiculous price hikes of recent years, taking flagship smartphones to near enough averaging four figures at this point. That's money that a lot of us either cannot afford or cannot justify putting into a smartphone purchase. Some blame the Snapdragon 865 of really being causing the price hikes and some even go as far as to blame the X55 5G modem for causing such an uplift in prices. So what are the Snapdragon 765 and 765 g chipsets? Well, they're eight core designs with one super high performance core, one high performance core and six efficiency cores. Both are built in the 7 nanometer manufacturing process, both have an Adreno 620, X52, 5G and LTE modems, and support Quick Charge 4 Plus and Quick Charge AI. The main difference between the 765 and the G variant is that the G variant comes with up to 20% faster graphics due to the fact that these chips are binned and so they are more likely to be able to be overclocked. So you can kind of think of the 765G as just a 765 with an overclocked graphics chip. There's also support for up to 36 megapixel main cameras, and if you've seen many of my videos, then you'll know that I much prefer larger sensors with larger pixels over binned ones anyway, so this is great. Plus, 36 megapixels gives you a lot of resolution, and Ultra HD video up to 30 FPS is supported. Some people might complain about no 60 FPS in Ultra HD, but remember the Pixel 4? Yeah, and that thing was capable of 60 FPS, it just never got the software update. Android Authority actually did some testing comparing the 765G to a selection of other chips including the 845, the 855, the 865 and even the Exynos 990 and found that the 765G was pretty damn close in terms of performance to the 855 which was last year's top tier flagship SoC. In just a year flagship performance has made its way into the mid-range chipsets which is really staggering to see. In terms of comms, both the 765 and G variants have both LTE and 5G support in their X52 modems, which are capable of around half the speeds of the flagship X55 5G modems, though the X52 is likely to be more power efficient because of this. Now, while 5HG is blisteringly fast and it is definitely the future of mobile comms, it's not widely available, at least <laughs> In a lot of places so i wouldn't expect this to be a real issue until about two years time where we can hopefully see more broad adaptation adaptation adoption it's like 4 a.m right now a wider adoption of 5g in terms of the towers in terms of the services provided by carriers and also by phones as well but what the 765 and 765G really represent is a shift in the smartphone market. The Pixel 4a or 5a is rumoured to come with the 765 chipset and the LG Velvet, the Motorola Edge, the Realme X50, the Redmi K30 and the Reno 4 all come with this awesome mid-range chip. Heck, even the rumoured OnePlus Z is rumoured to come with the 765 as well. And this cheaper chip means several things. One, device cost can be potentially lower. 2. Potential better battery life thanks to the more efficient SoC and 3. Manufacturers can spend more time and money on the user experience bits that actually matter like the display, the camera and most importantly the software that runs the whole thing. And you know what, and I've said this quite a lot recently, I don't think I can even recommend going out and buying a used flagship from a couple of years ago when system on a chips at the mid-range are being as good, they're becoming as fast in every area, not just CB, but also graphics and features as the, the flagship chips from a couple of years ago. The mid-range stuff is just so good these days and I feel like it's the way forward. I wouldn't be surprised if this year we see more flagships turn to the mid-range chips than the higher-end chips because of the price. It's just crazy. And with that, I want to end today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I want to give a massive shout out to my patrons for being amazing and supporting me continually. So thank you very much. 
Also check out uh, the links in the video description to the sources that I used in this video. Please do hit like, subscribe, never miss a video like this one. Also check out the comments and write me a comment, tell me what you think about the new mid-range chip or do you really, really want to see high-end specs and everything because some of my viewers are really much like that. As you can tell, I'm starting to go a bit cuckoo right now, so I'm going to end the video here. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.